So for the second time in history, the UK government is being led by a woman, and a woman in kitten heels, no less. So it's little wonder that a lot of people are hailing this a feminist victory, but I'm not so sure about that. Her victory owes a lot to feminism. Without the efforts of feminists down the years, she wouldn't be able to hold property, let alone the highest elected office in the land. But feminism is not just concerned, or shouldn't be just concerned, with the fates of the few women who make it to the top, but with the lives of all women collectively. So it's not just about who wields power, but how they wield it, and against who. And if we look at Theresa May's voting record, and her entire record in Parliament, we can clearly see that she has absolutely no problem wielding power in such a way that it impoverishes and endangers the lives of women in this country and across the world. She has presided over a brutal immigration policy that has seen women torn from their families, stripped of economic security, deported to their deaths, or banged up in detention centres across the country where abuse and sexual assault are the order of the day. Women have overwhelmingly borne the brunt of the austerity policies she's responsible for pushing through. And when the government proposed tax credits that promised to hit single mothers the hardest, she happily towed the party line. In fact, keeping Stoke carefully in step with frontline Tory policy has made her the ideal candidate for leader in the eyes of many of the front benches and many big Tory donors. She's directly thrown other women under the bus in her pursuit of power. So it might be easier to call it a feminist victory if you're not a poor woman or a queer woman or a woman of colour or a migrant woman, or a woman who has needed the NHS, or any of the other vital services that have been cut by austerity, or a woman in precarious work, or a woman in no work at all, or a sex worker, or a woman who's ever needed access to contraception and abortion, or who has debt to pay, or skyrocketing student loans, or rent to pay. Basically, there's like 17 people she hasn't already fucked over. What does it mean to say that this is a feminist victory when so many women are clearly harmed by it? Well, it's a vision of feminism that's so hollow and so vapid and so defanged that it's stripped of all its radical potential. It's a version of feminism that tells us to sit down and shut up because you've already won. But remember, just because a woman has been allowed to play the game doesn't mean the rules have changed. And the game that May is playing is a blood sport.